It's Good Friday. Happy Easter, everyone. This is a topic I don't visit on my show very often, but I could clearly see that there was a need for this because as I was doing a search today, I noticed they did not have an installation tutorial uh, for this software in English. So I figured I would put one together for you guys. Many of you guys don't know, but I am a recovered alcoholic and a recovered drug addict. And as such, this show would not even exist if it were not for software such as this to aid me in my recovery. I am going to show you how to install eSword using Play on Linux right after I roll the intro. Let's begin. Uh, I know this topic may rub some of you the wrong way, and if this ki kind of content bothers you, please move on. I am reaching out to people who will actually find a tutorial such as this to be useful. All right, uh, let's go ahead and uh, set up a few things. First, you're going to need to go to uh, e-sword.net to get your free copy of eSword. And the reason I'm doing this tutorial is uh, previously I showed you guys how to install Xiphos, and currently it's broken. For some reason it just stopped working, so I actually have to uh, use uh, the software I have installed on my Android when I want to uh, read uh, the Bible. Uh, so I decided, why not give this a try? I used to use this software, and um, it's time that I switch over to this because I know just how powerful this is. It's a wonderful piece of software, the best freeware on the planet. What can I say? All right, so you just go to this page and then you will download. This comes with uh, the King James Version of the Bible and uh, it also has KGV uh, with the um, with the Strong's numbers. And then within the software you can get other Bibles, concordances, graphics, and all that other stuff. It's all self-contained if uh, my information is correct on this. So once you have downloaded that, make sure that you have Play on Linux installed. I already have it running here because obviously I do lots of Play on Linux tutorials. And the reason I use Play on Linux is because I want to fight regressions. Uh, with Play on Linux, I can have several different versions of Wine installed. And something else that I did uh, before uh, getting the software was I actually went on Wine HQ's website, and I read through a number of these so that I could generate myself a list of dependencies for me to install. And I have that note up on the upper right corner of my screen, so I know what dependencies I'm, I'm going to need to even get this running. So let's go ahead and uh, prepare our work here. First, we're going to, uh, with Play on Linux open, we're going to press Configure, and then I'm going to select New. And, uh, oh, before I even do that, let's uh, close this window here. I will go into Tools manage wine versions and what I did was I downloaded the latest stable release which at this time is 1.8 so um, you know uh, even numbers are stable odd numbers are um, they're testing the I think uh, 196 is their latest testing so version 2.0 of wine is right around the corner Woo yeah so I just went and I picked 8, and I have that in my 32-bit. And I usually use 32-bit for most uh, Wine applications. Then we'll go into Configure. We're going to create a new virtual machine. We're going to select a 32-bit window installation. I'm going to select Wine version 1.8. And then we're going to call the C-Sword. Now it's going to go through the process of creating the virtual drive. And once that's done, then we can start loading in all of our dependencies. Once that has completed, we will select our virtual machine that we created. 
All right. And then what we're going to do is we are going to go into the install components tab and then we're going to install our dependencies. And I generated this little list here uh, from the Wine HQ website. So I know what applications I'm going to need. Let's start with MFC 42. We'll go ahead and install that. The window will automatically close once the, that dependency has installed and it doesn't say whether it's been successful or not. It just automatically closes, lets you know to move on to the next one. Next, we'll go to MSLS 31. Very quick, very easy. All right, and then uh, MS XML 3. Uh, someone else measured, uh, mentioned they needed an MS XML 6, so why not? We'll install that too, just to be sure. It doesn't hurt to have maybe one or two extra dependencies lighting around in there. Next, we'll grab VB Run 6. VC run six. And then we have Wish 57, WSH, this is at least what I call it, Wish 57. What it does, haven't got a clue, but uh, actually I think it uh, registers some necessary uh, DLL files that the software requires. So let's go ahead and get WSH 57, Wish 57. Gotta love it. <laughs> All right, and now that we have those... Uh, dependencies installed, and you could see that didn't really take much time. Uh, then we can uh, go into miscellaneous here and then run an exe in this virtual drive. We will go into our downloads folder, and uh, the current setup file is setup 1040. Let's go ahead and open that. All right, and then the installer is doing its work. All right, and now that that has installed, It opens up a web page, okay? I, and please consider donating if you want to use this. Uh, this is a great service they're putting out, so um, I recommend that you do make a donation for uh, for this. Keeps their ministry going. <laughs> All right, and then let's go ahead and go into a general, make a new shortcut from this virtual drive. Okay, and then we'll just pick eSword EXE. And that's fine. And then I'm just going to just press cancel because I really don't want any other shortcuts. And then we can close this main window here because now we have eSword in our list of applications. All right, and you may notice that it, nope, it didn't put one on the desktop, but we can go ahead and we can have that selected and then create a shortcut, and it'll put a shortcut on your desktop. 
And then you can put that shortcut anywhere you want to, in your menus, on your uh, toolbar, whatever takes your fancy. So we can create a launcher, which is what we just did. And then I have that. And then, of course, if you're using XFCE like I am, you can actually select the properties on a given launcher, and you can drag shortcuts into it like this. All right, so now I have that in my uh, drawer, my drop-down drawer, and I can launch it. So let's go ahead and launch it. And here we are. Okay, and uh, they have so many different modules and so many different things. I could spend all day talking about this piece of software, so experimentation is key on this. They have different layouts that you can select if you want uh, for reading and that sort of thing. And personally, this is the layout I like. And uh, you can also uh, change uh, the colors and do all kinds of really cool things with this. So, And it's a really powerful uh, piece of software with the uh, main layout here. Uh, when you have the commentaries and that sort of thing and the dictionaries and all of the other fun modules loaded into this. If you're, as you're reading along and, you know, you don't under maybe you don't understand the meaning of a given word, you can usually click on it and then it'll appear in the dictionary. Obviously, I don't have all the modules installed on this, but this is a very, very powerful piece of software in its own right. Uh, let's have a look here and see about maybe getting a different Bible module to put into this. Okay, here it is. They have a download section right here where you can get uh, Bibles. So let's have a look at that. All right, and it's all built in. So if I want the American Standard Version, being a good Catholic, I should probably want to read that one. So we just select that one. And now that is in the queue. And uh, what do we do here? Oh, okay, tell it to start the download. All right. All right, and now it says that it is installed. So uh, I can go ahead and close this window. Oh, we have to restart. All right, no problem. We'll launch it again. So now that we have relaunched the software, we can see that the American Standard Version is loaded right in there, works beautifully, looks beautiful, magnificent stuff. And of course, in the download section, you can get all kinds of other wonderful add-ons for this, such as uh, additional Bibles. If you want to compare texts between different versions, you can do that very easily. Commentaries, which will help you expand on your learning. Uh, dictionaries, daily devotions, uh, graphics and other reference books. This is awesome sauce, kids, and it doesn't get any better than this. Well, if you know of any native Linux Bibles that would be of use to people, maybe you might want to suggest them below. And uh, if it's something I haven't seen before, I might bring that up on a future uh, Cup of Linux episode. You never know what I'm going to uh, do on here since my focus has mainly shifted to software reviews rather than doing reviews on distributions as a whole. I, I like looking at individual pieces of software a lot more, it seems, lately. Um, something else I wanted to mention, uh, since we are still here, you can change uh, the way this looks, too. You'll notice I have a dark desktop. And if you want your uh, window app windowed application to match your desktop, you can make some changes. And this is easily achieved by in the Play on Linux uh, setup here by going into Configure, all right, and then you uh, select your uh, your uh, virtual hard drive, eSword in this case. We're going to go into Wine and then Configure Wine. Now, we're not going to be able to see these changes in real time, per se, but um, you should be able to... Um, 
you know, change its appearance. Something else I wanted to mention, some people mentioned that having a Windows 7 setup uh, is necessary for running eSword when using this configurator, so you can choose Windows 7 if you want. But I noticed this is working fine with the Windows XP settings, so I'm just going to leave well enough alone. If it ain't broke, why fix it, right? Okay, we go into desktop integration right here, and now we can go in and make some changes to this. And this is, uh, for me, you, you can download an MS style, uh, but for me, I like to just sit here and have fun and uh, make some uh, changes manually. So uh, I actually do that. I'll uh, go into, um, like, the control background and just start changing colors. Define custom colors. Maybe uh, make that a little bit lighter. Add that to custom colors. Okay. Select apply. And as we go along, you can see things are starting to change. Now, you're not seeing that on the software just yet, but as you plug away on this, you'll be able to uh, eventually uh, get this to um, look exactly how you want it. So just by going in and uh, changing some colors, select Apply, and you can see we're starting to get a nice little appearance that's going to eventually match our system here. All right, and a pop-up came up. Not sure what that is because I'm sitting here meddling with the uh, colors and that sort of thing. Uh, maybe I'll just grab a, an MS style. I have one hidden somewhere. Well, that's all I have on this. I'm uh, not sure what the next topic is going to be on my show, but uh, I'm sure I'll see you all real soon. Peace out. Mm -hmm.